Hi, I'm Joanna Gully from History 131 and 03 American History 1, and this is my short essay assignment number one. Question one. Discuss the differences and similarities between lifestyles, religious practices, and customs among the native people. Prior to colonization, the American continents were inhabited by native people whose lifestyles and cultures differed from group to group and from civilization to civilization. Southern America was inhabited by multiple Mesoamerican and Andean civilizations, including the Olmec, Maya, Aztec, and Inca, who were all known for being more advanced and having social structures that are present in modern societies. Northern America was inhabited by natives commonly referred to as American Indians, who were nomadic in nature and resided within tribes. According to U.S. History by OpenStax, with few exceptions, the North America native cultures were much more widely dispersed in the Mayan, Aztec, and Incan societies, and did not have their population size or organized social structures. While Mesoamerican cultures were erecting permanent public structures, such as temples and roads, and establishing institutions that encouraged population growth, natives in Northern America lived in more personalized villages that were more temporary and equipped with just what was needed to survive on a daily basis. One similarity shared between Northern and Southern America was that they both had polytheistic religions. Furthermore, groups on both halves of the Americas had trade systems and used agriculture to some extent, even if some were more advanced than others. Overall, all American culture pre-colonization functioned on different paces and were influenced by the land on which they resided. Question 2. Analyze the effects of the Columbian Exchange on both America and Europe. The Columbian Exchange was a system of exchanges between America, Europe, and Africa, which revolutionized each country for better and for worse. According to U.S. History by OpenStax, the crossing of the Atlantic by plants like cacao and tobacco illustrates the ways in which the discovery of the New World changed the habits and behaviors of Europeans. Europeans changed the New World in turn, not least by bringing Old World animals to the Americas. The introduction of horses to northern native populations was especially beneficial to them and enhanced their hunting practices. The plants brought from America to Europe enriched Europe. Tobacco specifically became a staple and cash crop. Tobacco remains an important crop to this day in both Europe and America. While there were definitely positive things that came to both Europe and the Americas through the Columbian Exchange, there were definitely some negative impacts as well. Not only did the Europeans bring Old World animals and crops to the Americas, but they also brought diseases, a big one being smallpox. This was truly devastating for native populations as they had not been exposed to it before and were extremely susceptible. Overall, the Columbian Exchange had both positive and negative consequences that impacted Europe and America accordingly. Question 3. Identify the first English settlements in America and when they occurred. During the 17th century, England got to work and began settling in America. They wasted no time in catching up and surpassing the number of settlements created by other European nations. According to U.S. History by OpenStax, the English encouraged immigration far more than the Spanish, French, or Dutch. They established nearly a dozen colonies, sending swarms of immigrants to populate the land. England had experienced a dramatic rise in population in the 16th century, and the colonies appeared a welcoming place for those who faced overcrowding and grinding poverty at home. The first settlements created by the English were the Chesapeake Bay Settlement in 1606, which was more commercially oriented, and the New England Settlement in 1629, which was religiously motivated. The New Hampshire Settlement was also established in 1629. The Plymouth Colony was founded in 1620 and was the first Puritan colony. In 1636, the Rhode Island, Connecticut, and New Haven colonies all settled, as did the Maryland colony in 1634. The English continued to create settlements throughout the 17th century, including the Pennsylvania Settlement in 1681 and the Carolina Settlement in 1663. It didn't take long for England to dominate Northern America's East Coast, and they continued to create settlements into the 18th century. Question 4. 
identify the causes of the Glorious Revolution. The Glorious Revolution is characterized by the switch in the British government from an all-powerful monarchy system to a system that gave the parliament more control. This was caused mainly by James II's endeavors to create a centralized Catholic government and an increasingly Protestant population. According to LumenLearning.com's lesson on the Glorious Revolution, during his short reign, James II became directly involved in the political battles between Catholicism and Protestantism and between the divine right of kings and the political rights of the Parliament of England. The divine right of kings refers to the idea that kings have the God-given power to rule absolutely. This ideal, combined with his Catholic beliefs, put James at odds with the growing Protestant population and those who desired a more Parliament-based governing system. Moreover, the birth of his first son James in 1688 led the public to further satisfaction as his daughter Mary and her husband, both Protestants, would have been heirs to the throne otherwise. Clearly, the people of Britain were not happy with the way things were looking for them, and they feared that King James II would become tyrannical, and that his son would rule similarly. These factors collectively led to the Glorious Revolution. Question 5. Why were the American colonies increasingly resistant to British rule? The American colonies were increasingly resistant to British rule due to the unjust acts and taxes being dealt to them by the king. The Stamp Act was the instigator of colonial protest, and according to U.S. history by OpenStax, while the architects of the Stamp Act saw the measure as a way to defray the cost of the British Empire, it nonetheless gave rise to the first major colonial protest against British imperial control, as expressed in the famous slogan, no taxation without representation. The Stamp Act reinforced the sense among some colonists that Parliament was not treating them as equal as their peers across the Atlantic. While the Stamp Act was eventually repealed after months of protesting, the colonist strife didn't end there. Britain continued to impose new taxes upon the colonists without their representation in British Parliament and created acts such as the Quartering Act, which required that British troops and the colonies must be housed and the Townshend Act, which placed a tax on multiple goods that were frequently imported by the colonies. These unjust taxations and responsibilities placed upon the colonists caused them to begin to resist British rule. Question 6. What were some of the objections made against the King of Great Britain, and why is independence being declared? The Declaration of Independence is, as its name states, a declaration of independence by America to the King of Great Britain, due to his great injustice towards him. According to the Declaration of Independence, whenever any form of government becomes destructive of these ends, it is the right of the people to alter or to abolish it, and to institute new government, laying its foundations on such principles and organizing its powers in such form as to them shall seem most likely to affect their safety and happiness. Because of the king's tyrannical behavior, the colonists wished to leave his rule and create a government of their own. The Declaration lists 27 objections in total, and a common theme amongst them is that colonists' dissatisfaction with the amount of power the king has over them, despite being back in Great Britain. Taxation without representation is an important injustice included. Some of the complaints mentioned eventually became a part of the Bill of Rights in the U.S. Constitution, including the colonists' deprivation of a jury trial and the quartering of troops in the colonies. The king had no regard for the laws made by the colonies and used the fact that they were overseas to ad his advantage in trials by making false accusations that couldn't be confirmed or denied. Overall, the declaration outlines the tyrannous behavior of the king of England and the oppressions he has brought on the colonists that lead them to want to leave his rule. Question 7. How did Republican revolutionaries envision American society under the new government? Under the new government, Republican revolutionaries envisioned American society to follow that of the Roman Republic. According to U.S. History by OpenStax, the Roman Republic provided guidance. Much like the Americans in their struggle against Britain, Romans had thrown off monarchy and created a republic in which Roman citizens would appoint or select the leaders who would represent them. Based on this, the Republican revolutionaries envisioned a society in which they would appoint their representatives. 
These representatives would then make laws they saw fit the people. For a republic to run smoothly, its citizens that vote must be virtuous. According to U.S. History by OpenStax, revolutionary leaders agreed that the ownership of property provided one way to measure an individual's virtue, arguing that property holders had the greatest stake in society and therefore could be trusted to make decisions for it. By the same token, non-property holders, they believed, should have very little to do with the government. This meant that people who weren't property owners wouldn't have a say in who their representatives would be. This gave even more power to the elite and took away power from those who already had little. Therefore, the Republican revolutionaries envisioned a society whose laws would be in favor of the elite. Question 8. What was the reason for the creation of the Bill of Rights, and why was this important? The Bill of Rights was created because without it, many states would not have accepted the Constitution. According to U.S. History by OpenStax, many Americans opposed the 1787 Constitution because it seemed a dangerous concentration of centralized power that threatened the rights and liberties of ordinary U.S. citizens. The protection of individual rights and freedoms were very important to many citizens and states. Some states even required a Bill of Rights to be added to the Constitution in order for them to accept it. By adding the first ten amendments to the Constitution, the people were more satisfied, as it explicitly stated individual rights granted to them. Furthermore, its addition demonstrates that the Constitution was meant to protect Americans and be more personal than it was originally. By adding Amendments 9 and 10 especially, anti-federalist fears of an overpowered centralized government were lessened, allowing for the Constitution to be accepted. Overall, Without the drafting of the Bill of Rights, the Constitution would likely have not been accepted, and it's hard to imagine what the Constitution would even be like without it. The addition of amendments to the Constitution also allowed for the, cons the Constitution to be better fit for changing times, as in the future more freedoms were added according to major events in American history, such as the 13th and 19th Amendments. It's clear that the Bill of Rights was a meaningful addition to the Constitution and are things that are exercised on the daily by American citizens such as the right to freedom of religion.